Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The Supreme Court grants local government financial autonomy. The Supreme Court has ruled on Thursday that state governors cannot hold funds allocated to local government administrations, declaring that the 774 local government councils in Nigeria should manage their own finances. This judgment, delivered by Justice Emmanuel Agim, emphasized the separation of powers among the federal, state, and local governments, and stated that only democratically elected local government councils are constitutionally recognized. The court further declared that the appointment of caretaker committees by state governments to control local government councils is unconstitutional. Justice Agim stated that the local governments must receive and manage their funds directly, and any other arrangement would be considered gross misconduct. The judgment stressed that state governments retaining local government funds is a violation of the 1999 Constitution. The court ordered an injunction preventing state governments or their agents from spending local government allocations. The ruling emphasized the need for immediate compliance and declared that local government allocations should be paid directly to democratically elected local government councils. Just as again dismissed objections filed by state governors reinforcing the local government's entitlement to their funds. Joining us now to make sense of all of this is Chooks Akuna. He's the executive director, authority newspaper Abuja. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. All right. So this has been in the works for a couple of weeks right now, whereby um, the federal government actually took the state governors to court because we've seen whereby the state governors have been the one ruling the affairs for the local government as well. Meanwhile, in the 1999, in the 1999 Constitution, you would expect that there has to be the federal, state, and local government um, you know, levels. But we've seen whereby the state governors are still the ones holding the funds and even appointing some um, local government chairman. Now, with this new directive from the court, what is your take on all of it with the fact that the court has ruled saying that the local government should have their own autonomy? Yes, thank you very much. But, but before we delve into that, I think it would be necessary to go back in time in 1999 or 1998 as case may be when um, the military handed, us, uh, handed over to us uh, 1999 constitution. You know, in the constitution therein, um, in the constitution uh, handed over to us by the military, we had four-year tenure for the president, we had four-year tenure for the governors, then surprisingly, we have three-year tenure for the local government chairman. And very interestingly, the local government elections held was the first election to vote in Nigeria in 1999. And then several persons were elected local government chairman. And it was on the basis of that that um, parties that didn't uh, beat uh, a certain threshold were barred from uh, registration, any registration. The military government at the time, headed by General Absalam Abubakar, uh, stipulated that a certain number of um, seats, local government areas, to be to be won by local government by, by by certain parties to be eligible for registration as political parties. And even at the time, a party like AD Alliance for Democracy, they not meet that threshold. But because of the problems caused by the annulment of the June 12, 1993 election. And the same military uh, persons, then um, General Sani Abacha, I mean, um, General Ibrahim Babangida, um, the military felt that it would be most unfair not to register the Alliance for Democracy. So they went ahead to, to register the Alliance for Democracy. So I, I think it's good for us to understand the historical background of this problem. So several council chairmen in 1999 felt that they were superior to the governors because they were the ones who actually made the governors win the elections. I had several problems in several states. Anambra, River State, you know, where local governments saw themselves, as I said earlier, superior to the governors. So what happened? The governors waited for their tenure to, to lapse. So in 2002, the tenure of the council chairman lapsed. And that provided the governors with the opportunity, the chance to extract their pound of flesh. So that said, here we are today. You know, the, the, yesterday the Supreme Court ruled that um, 
withholding of council funds by governors uh, is illegal, means illegal, and that henceforth that no money should be paid directly to the um, to the to the governors. But then, much as we hear in Supreme Court judgment, the Supreme Court judgment also um, um, has raised certain questions. Like states like Lagos and Ondo State, Lagos State they have uh, the local government areas. They also created local government development authorities (LCDs). Mm. So one of them is what's going to become of such LCDs. I think Lagos State and Ondo State they have that and that uh, that are normal. And it also calls to question the state of our federalism because now you are you have. Um, you made you would we sought to, we sought to make um, the uh, local government more autonomous, but now or we try to we trying to entrench federalism, but in another breath, yesterday's judgment has created a fresh problem because now the states have become weakened, and the federal government is going to pay straight to local government uh, councils. But is that a bad thing or a good thing? Because if the state, like you said, are weakened, but the local government has strengthened, and the local government happens to be the, um, the, t the chair of government that is closest to the people, right. are, are, we, are we losing or gaining? It depends on what part of the spectrum. You, I mean, you know, every, every plan has two sides. Like I said, we ought to have um, holistically um, amended the constitution. Because even the judgment yesterday, we saw somebody like um, uh, Chief James Iboi, former government of the state, you know, raising certain questions. And those questions are legitimate. Because the same constitution which the Supreme Court relied on also provided for joint state local government account. So we did not envisage that governors will be tampering with uh, local government funds or will refuse to hold uh, local government elections. So like I said, it's... Um, it's best for us to actually um, look at how to amend the constitution so that the judgment of the Supreme Court yesterday will not be in conflict with the spirit and the and parts. I mean, parts of uh, spirit and, part, and, and letter of parts of the constitution, which stipulates that yes, in one hand, on the one hand, yes, uh, councils are supposed to be run by elected officials. Yes, you know, on the other hand, too, the money is to be paid to to local governments are to be paid through local government and state joint accounts. Hmm. But, but, you know, looking at what you just said, that you, people did not know that the state governors would be tampering with the funds for the local government, and then even the state governors would be appointing this local government chairman. Now that we know that they can send their money or they can get their money, their monies directly, don't you think this is going to make a significant impact when it comes to the development of each local government area? Because... I'm only going to know about my locality. As a state governor, there's only so much you can do because you're only going to be in certain areas at certain points in the four-year tenure that you have. But with the local government, because this is my own um, little constituency, I can start to look at the, de the development of my own place. Don't you think so? No, no, I do. I do agree with you. But you see, it's not... Um the absence or shortage of laws that is our problem in Nigeria is implementation. That's right. I'm going to give you an, as an example. Growing up as a child, we have what we call the LGAs, local government education authorities, and they were vested with the powers of managing primary education in, in around around the country. But today you have what you call UBEC, Universal Basic Education Commission. Mm -hmm. And through UBEC, the federal government is running primary education. Federal government is running state education. I mean, uh, tertiary institutions. Federal government is running secondary education in Nigeria, and this ought to be an aberration. I mean, this this is an aberration because in true federalism, in true federalism, issues like defense, issues like foreign policy, issues like um, um, yeah, like taxes, to some extent, should be the responsibility of um, of the federal government. But now we have a federal government that is involved in every aspect of our lives. And then with this, this ruling, the federal government, no doubt, will now um, be directly involved in running of local government uh, answers. And I'll tell you why. It will take a minimum of two, three months for any governor to conduct elections, no matter how, how um, um, safe it is to conduct elections. Because I know that states like Rivers, it will be 
practically impossible given the security situation in rivers today. It's practically impossible, very difficult for the four governors simply to to conduct elections. But that said, and then we've not asked ourselves the questions of all the elections that have been conducted by state independent electoral commissions so far, how many increments that's when I, I mean, how many um, non in, uh, uh, parties of non of, uh, of the governors? Um, I mean, how many non parties of the governors have won council, uh, council elections in the state? You see a situation where if a governor elected on the platform of the APC today defects to PDP and conducts council election tomorrow, chances are that 27, I mean, 100% of all the states will be declared by his uh, new party. So it, it has not really helped democracy in Nigeria. And then um, the issue of um, defections and what have you, you know, it's also a problem that needs to be addressed. Mm. So, like I said, if should the governors not should, should the governors not be able to um, be unable to conduct elections in the next two three months? I mean, I, I wonder how um, such councils in the such uh, states, I mean, councils in such states would be run because the Supreme Court has ordered the federal government to withhold the funds of any local government area that I mean, I'm, I'm any council that is not that, that don't have elected chairman. So the implication is that uh, the federal Ministry of Finance is going to withhold that money because. I don't see the federal government paying that money to any of the any of the um, of the states involved. And let, let me take us back to when the current president, Bolan Mentini, was governor of Lagos State. He created national local government areas in Lagos, and President Basanjo at the time um, ceased with the allocation of the of uh, to Lagos State that he should revert to should revert back to uh, status quo. And the case went up to the Supreme Court. And Supreme Court um, directed that ordered that federal government release the funds of uh, of uh, of Lagos State. So I don't know what I don't know if, it, if this is um, um, deja vu mm. what's going to happen. But now the Supreme Court has ruled this, and as far as we're concerned, the judgment of the Supreme Court in Nigeria is final and cannot be appealed unless these judges come back tomorrow to say that they want to review this uh, judgment. Yes, this judgment. Yeah, I, I do believe that um, the local council development areas were not paid by the, were, did not have allocation from the federal government. Yeah. They were giving the recognized local governments and how they were sharing within themselves uh, was their case in, in, in the state here in Lagos and any other state that is uh, having council development areas. Uh, but from what you have said, it means that this is just the first hurdle that has been, has been uh, cleared. Because if the Supreme Court has said this and the Constitution is still not amended, that means the JAC is still there. That means uh, we'll be looking at maybe even the cry of INEC that they should take over the um, running of, uh, of or the conduction of the elections mm -hmm. in every state. And before that could be done, it might take us a whole tenure. Yes, exactly. But then the issue is this. Uh, yesterday's uh, judgment, um, we are told, it's meant to deep on the federalism. It's meant to uh, advance the course of federalism. But then if you if you don't allow states to conduct elections and you say I make we already know that INEC is uh, belabored with uh, uh, conducting elections in thirty six states and, and, and federal constituencies and central districts. So asking INEC that's already uh, overburdened to conduct elections in uh, seven hundred and seventy four local government areas. It's, I mean, I think it defeats the essence of true federalism. What we need to do is to strengthen our laws, strengthen our laws so that it makes it impossible for public for, for office holders to abuse power. I'm going to give us examples. Ah, the 136 state governors, how are they faring? You know, we have, we have several dictators. We have persons who run their states from their bedrooms. And as we speak, we have a particular case, we have a case in there, and um, where one of the former governors is on the run. So it's not um, the it's not um, the law, like I said, but it's an implementation because the case now is assuming um, we have or we had seven hundred twenty four elected uh, council chairmen as of yesterday. It means that you've created apart from the thirty six state governors who are already gods or team gods, the demigods, whatever you call them in their states, you are creating another set of seven hundred twenty four um, demigods. Because it means that with the kind of financial autonomy council chairman we have, 
And then let's, let's also not forget that um, the same constitution gives the state house of assembly powers over the councils. So, it, you see, like I said, if we do not, if we want to tackle this problem, it has to be tackled holistically, you know, because like someone like uh, James Ibori said, I mean, we do not like uh, James Ibori, but you know, the law is the law. We constitution is constitution. So if uh, the law says that there should be, like you said, like you also rightly said, a joint account, you know, I I wonder what happens to that section, the other section of the constitution. Mm. So if, for instance, the local governments, they need to have their own account, they get their own funds um, straight from the federal governments, how can we even be sure that they would be transparent um, with the funds and even accountable, especially when it comes to developing their local government areas? That's my point. I'm going to give us an example. Uh, former Governor of the University Chief, uh, Dr. Peter Audi, when the EFCC wanted to investigate him, they went to court. He went to court and said that uh, the House of Assembly is constitutionally empowered to investigate the governors. True. But then, how many persons today, how many Houses of Assembly, even from the federal, from the House of Reps and the Senate, from our experience in the early 2000s, um, there is the, the saying that, um, that if a hunter um, has, learned, has mastered the art of shooting without uh, missing, then the bird too will learn to fly without perching. Mm -hmm. So, because of the problems of Assembly had, people like Okadibu, I mean, choosing uh, a Naba, late Gary Naba, and late Shibokadi. So, every president has sought to, um, and every governor, the idea had, has sought to um, ensure that his own person becomes Speaker of the House or becomes semi president. So, uh, we, we once had a history of a man who said that anything Buhari wanted, the, the Senate was going to pass. Mm -hmm. And we, 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 since 2003 or 2007, I dare say, that no, every attempt by any speaker in Nigeria to oppose his governor is met with um, 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 uh, consequences. And of course, we, we all know what the consequences are. Anybody who doesn't get the blessing of the governor does not become speaker in state. Anybody who doesn't get the blessing of the president does not become speaker of the House of Reps or the Senate president. So if we do not strengthen democracy, do not strengthen our legislative arm of government, you know, how many governors have been effectively impeached in Nigeria? Mm. So if you create this now very powerful uh, local government chair, and you have weak legislatures in the councils, you know, what's, what's guaranteed that this local government chairman will, uh, will, will, uh, will perform as uh, the, 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 as the justices of the Supreme Court, and many Nigerians, including me, you know, want them too. So in your opinion, how do you think this um, ruling should have gone? Because obviously now we know that the local governments have the autonomy, especially when it comes to um, finances, but what would you have wanted to see with the ruling yesterday? Well, we have to, see, we have to... Uh, it's not good to throw away the baby with the bad water. Yeah. Bath water. Yes, it's a very good move. But then we should go beyond that. We should then, um, should the federal government should diverge from all forms of interference in states and local government areas. Um, I'll give us an example. But doesn't that stifle um, the local government doing what they are supposed to do in the first place? If the state governors still have to rule the affairs of the states, even down to the local government areas. But that's it. You know, like I said, it, it starts with the federal government. You know, we lead by example. You know, like I told you, I gave us an example of primary education. The federal government has no business going to be primary schools in my village to start with. That's the truth. Because, you know, uh, we, we've tried different forms of government. We've tried um, my regional government. And we tried um, in terrorism when uh, Agnes took over. He, 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 he changed Nigeria from the federal system to the uh, uh, system. And of course, it failed. Then we came back, maybe because of perhaps because of the long years of military, we still have this military uh, mentality, where you know, if you call, if you address the president and do not add commander in chief of the armed forces, it makes him less president than it should be. So I, I, I've never seen the U.S. calling uh, Joe Biden president of America and commander in chief. It's um, it's um, it's um, it's automatic. If you're president of a country, you're commander in chief of that. If you're an elected president, uh, not a ceremonial president. The commander in chief of the armed forces of that country. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a given. 
So, but each time you call, even in Nigeria, you call governors, you don't call them executive governors. They feel some of them feel bad. You know, that I ask myself because of the uh, long years of military, where we have military governors, we have been generators. So, if you if you don't call a governor, if you, if you call a governor, governor of uh, blah blah, if you don't have, you don't you don't preface it with executive. You know, some of them feel offended, and that's the problem with our brand of democracy. Mm -hmm. We we have to we have to go beyond. Um, these issues we have to we have to service mm. you know i think we're not we're not uh, trying to sell because if you go to the western world you don't want to enjoy events of democracy like us in the western world yeah. but we all know that even two kids in primary schools in the western world they take them out sometimes to, to for social work you know they go and they go to prisons they go and you know community development but here it's 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 alien to our culture so, you know, somebody gets elected as local government chairman or as governor, you know, a lot of people see this as an opportunity to, to chalk. And um, this is a problem. You know, it's not, it's not because uh, it's not because the designers of the construction meant evil for the country, hmm. but the implementers, you know, I dare say, you know, are the ones who are, you know, um, cashing in on the loopholes, you know, to, to, to bend the system, to bend the rules. Well, we hope that all of those loopholes are being covered and whatever, I mean, there's the um, court has ruled and so we expect that everyone should be able to, uh, well, I say respect that. And for the governors, I'm sure there should still be a way they can work with the local government because at the end of the day, what we're really looking for is the growth and development of our nation, Nigeria. So we're all supposed to put our hands in the plow, do it together and ensure that we flourish together as a nation. Anyways, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Chicks, we want to say thank you for coming and just sharing your thoughts on this. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. All right, so we've been speaking with Chooks Akuna. He's the executive director, authority newspaper, joining us from Abuja. And we've just been talking about the local governments gaining their financial autonomy as ruled by the Supreme Court. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about raising awareness for kids with congenital heart disease. Please stay with us. Thank you.